In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? What do I need to do? A deep and philosophical and theological question indeed is addressed head on by our Lord today when he is challenged by a certain lawyer. To which Jesus responds with a question. What do you know that is written in the law? Knowing full well that the lawyer already knew the answer to his own question, he responds offering what in other Gospels are called the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your mind and your heart and your soul and strength, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. Good answer, Jesus tells him. Do this and you will live indeed. But the lawyer, wanting to push this radical Nazarene Jesus Christ even further, asks him more specifically, then who is my neighbor? And our Lord Jesus Christ, in his eternal wisdom, offers us such rich symbolism in his response, even in his setting of the scene in this parable of the Good Samaritan, when he says a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. What does this mean? We have to remember, the road from Jerusalem to Jericho was a notoriously dangerous road. In somewhat less than 20 miles, this road dropped 3,600 feet. It was a narrow road with rocky paths and sudden turnings, which made it happy hunting ground for bandits in the area. Even in the 5th century, Jerome tells us that it was called the Red or Bloody Way. Even up until the 19th century, it was still necessary to pay safety money for safe travel in order to pass by this road. So at the time when Jesus was telling this story, he was telling about the kind of thing that was constantly happening on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. So perhaps we can say, the traveler himself was maybe a bit reckless and foolhardy character to take on such a road alone. Perhaps one might even say that he had no one to blame but himself for his fate. But then we see the priest hastening past the beaten man, no doubt knowing that he who touched a dead man would be ritually unclean for seven days. Thus he would have lost his turn of duty at the temple, an honor he was not willing to give up. So he passes by on the other side. So to the Levite, seeing the man passes by the other side, not willing to sacrifice his own safety, so should he get ambushed and stopped as well. Then we see this Samaritan, someone who for Jesus' audience at the time was already the villain before doing anything at all. Yet shockingly, he is the one who had compassion. He's the one who came to the beaten traveler. He bound up his wounds. He set him on his own donkey, and he brought him to an inn. And the parable at this point makes very clear to us and to the lawyer about who our neighbor is. That my neighbor is not exclusively someone connected to me by blood or country or creed, but my neighbor is at each instant someone whom God has brought near to me, put in my path. My neighbor is the person I become close to through my serving his or her need even if he or she is a stranger or enemy. Perhaps one of the greatest lessons of our Christian faith is that our love for God cannot be separated from our love for every other person in this world. And that our outpouring of love for everyone in this world is a direct love to God himself. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we try to justify ourselves as the lawyer in this morning's gospel by defining our neighbor on our terms, not on God's terms. Often we think about those in our very neighborhood that go to the same school, that are of the same race 
or same culture or same political party or same faith. But in the Greek, we see the word used for neighbor is plision. Plision. This means literally the person to your side, the one next to you. And looking at this word for neighbor in the parable of the Good Samaritan, we see that our neighbor is not a fixed person or group of people, but it's always changing. Our neighbor is the human person we are currently confronted with at any time. You see, the Samaritan, a heretic he may have been, he had the love of God in his heart. Too often, especially for us Orthodox, we're more interested in dogmas, in rules, or in canons, or in certain strictness. But in the end, we will be judged not by the creed we hold, but by the life that we live and the love that we give. And the truth is, unfortunately, we often make our own orthodoxy its own idol, doing anything in the name of orthodoxy, thinking that the Orthodox Church's beauty is found in its nuances or in its rules or in its strictness or even in its oddities. But perhaps there is a better perspective of our faith as Orthodox Christians. And that is that really there is no orthodoxy. There is the church. There is the body of Christ, married to Christ. From our perspective, orthodoxy is just a name that we give to the church to distinguish it from other doctrines or assemblies that might miss the mark. So as the church, we need to chiefly focus on our marriage with Christ. In the beaten man on the road, we need to see Christ, the suffering servant, the least of our brethren. So too, the Good Samaritan is Christ, who pours on the oil and wine of the New Testament and the grace of God for the healing of our infirmities. Christ brings us to the inn, the Church of God, where we find everything necessary for our spiritual recovery. St. John Chrysostom Musen says, The inn is the church which receives travelers who are tired from their journey in this life and oppressed with the load of their sins, where the weary traveler, casting off his sins, is relieved, refreshed, and restored. At the inn, the Samaritan, we read, took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. Whatever more you spend... I will repay you when I come back. We don't know when the Samaritan came back. Or we, do, we don't even know the fate of the beaten man. Or what kind of tab was run up on the innkeeper. Just the command of the Samaritan, take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. And this provides us a great teaching about one of the often overlooked characters of this parable of the Good Samaritan, that is, the innkeeper himself. Notice his own mercy and compassion. When the fate of the beaten man is brought to his doorstep, he takes him in. He trusts the credit of the Samaritan, and he takes care of him. Just as the Samaritan did not have time to stay longer to tend to the man, so too did our Lord Jesus have to depart from us to ascend to his own heavenly throne. As St. Ambrose of Milan teaches us so beautifully, Blessed then is that innkeeper who is able to cure the wounds of another. Blessed is he to whom Jesus says, Whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. We too are called to be like the other man who proved neighbor, to be like the innkeeper, to have mercy, compassion, and serve those who are brought to us in need and take care of them, for God himself has told us to do so. And also tells us that whatever we sacrifice of ourselves for the well-being of others, he himself will repay when he returns. Brothers and sisters, what better guarantee can we ask for than that of a guarantee from God himself? He will repay us when he comes back. May we turn, may we turn to the church and to Christ in our desire to, to fulfill these two commandments, to love the Lord our God with all our mind, our heart, our soul, and strength, 
and to love our neighbor, whoever that may be, as our very own self. To our all-merciful and loving God be all glory, honor, and worship, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen.